This week on the 77% Street Debate. Cameroonians have lost the taste, you understand? So every country has right to regulate what its, his, people's con, his people consume. I manage artists, of course I want their content to be consumed, but I'm not going to force it inside anybody's throat. If you want your music to be, to be played, you have to pay for your own music to be played in your own country. If your blog is a music blog, go and search for great talents and expose them. That is your job. But you know what, these DJs will take your song and they'll keep it in their beds. They'll keep it and they won't play it. You cannot come out, you, you cannot come out and say no. I Hello and welcome to 77% Street Debate right here in the beautiful city of Douala, Cameroon. My name is Marivon Sofo and on today's edition we are looking into the entertainment industry. Our topic for today is should the foreign content of be, rest be restricted or re regulated in the nation of Cameroon or not? And I'd like to start with you, Siwa International. You are an actor, you're an actor, you're a comedian, and you're one of the key advocates about this particular issue. You have been on it for years now. Why do you think that the foreign content or foreign content should be reg regulated in our nation, Cameroon? It should be regulated because there is just no way the, the producers of local content can excel in their production if the foreign content is dominating locally. So it should be regulated. That is why I came up with the 80-20 concept in order to valorize what is being produced home, valorizing ours to 80% and then foreign to 20%. So much so that uh, the, the, the local producers also can really uh, um, excel in whatever they th uh, thing they're doing. Thank yeah. you very much. Now, for those of you who are not um, aware about the 8020, it's a campaign that CY International has been advocating for for the past years now, as in 80% of Cameroon's content should be enjoyed everywhere, irrespective of it. We're talking music, dance, movie, 80% and 20% given to um, the foreign content. I would like to hear from Vicky Fokala. You are an MC, an event planner, and a very well renowned one in the entertainment industry. What do you have to say about the issue of the 8020 concerning the in, in the regulations in the entertainment industry? Okay, speaking about the regulations, I, I, I'd like to use a metaphor to to explain that um, these glasses are from a brand, mm -hmm. and with me, I have these glasses that are made by a Cameroonian brand. This is a Cameroonian brand. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the whole 8020 discussion is why should I wear this instead of this, or why should I wear this instead of this? Mm -hmm. Now, both of them look amazing. They look nice. Yeah. They all fit me properly, but why would I choose to wear this? I'll choose to wear this because it speaks more to me. Mm -hmm. It relates more to where I come from. Yeah. It relates more to my culture. It relates more to my life, to where I am and everything about me. It is my country and it is beautiful. Now, I think if we want to talk about music, we're going to say, all right, if they say Cameroonian people or Cameroonian artists need to, need to create more content, we have content. People are just not looking for that content. And the only problem I think that we have is at the level of the promotion of that content. But now the reason why there is a problem with the promotion is because people don't even believe in the content that they have. Because you will promote what you believe in. You're going to see a lot of artists here, but they just don't have the push because they feel like, okay, it's Cameroonian, it's no good. You said a lot of things, and we are going to take them one after the other. I love some key points that you have brought up. We will discuss that. But I really want to talk to um, Clarice Ndingeye. Clarice Ndingeye, you're one of the famous bloggers that we have in the nation. I mean, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a great fan. But what's your stand about this issue? Is it, is it a must for us, or does this regulations, is it required? Honestly, I feel like the 8020 movement is not necessary. Let me explain. Um, to say that people, there has to be a regulation is to say that Cameroonians do not support their own. And I will never accept that because if Cameroonians do not support, I will not be who I am, I will not be where I am because it's Cameroonians who support what I do. Yes. Um, you know, for years, we have had Cameroonian artists fill stadiums in Cameroon and out of Cameroon. It is Cameroonians who show up to these places. Yes. To say that there needs to be a regulation is to say that there's a need. We, people are not consuming, but people are consuming Cameroonian content. So I feel like the approach to that particular movement is not a good approach. The approach should be promotion of Cameroonianness, promotion of identity as a Cameroonian. And it's going to be instinctive. It's not going to have to be said. 
Amazing, amazing. Identity of a Cameroonian. Cameroonianess. I love the statement, Cameroonianess. In the 1970s and 80s, Cameroonian styles Makosa and Bikutsi were popular around the whole world. Manu Dibangu was the most successful Makosa artist. And Les Têtes Brûlées, the most successful Bikutsi group. Bikutsi is a rhythmic style which originated with the Beti people of present-day Cameroon. While Mokosa was originally a Cameroonian dance rhythm from the Douala region. In the 1990s, popularity of Cameroonian music declined. Today, there are still many popular artists like Libyanka, Richard Bona and many more. But Cameroonian music enthusiasts claim that the typical Cameroon beat, the Cameroonianness of the national music, got lost. I want to talk to Asaba. Asaba, you're, you're a leading performing artist, you're a songwriter. How does the whole foreign content affect you? Does, it, does the presence of foreign content restrict or stop you from being where you want to be as an artist? It definitely doesn't. I mean, shout out to Libyanka. We are proud to definitely have her as a Cameroonian, right? We can actually be able to regulate this thing and make music, our music heard. In the early 70s, early 80s, our music was stopping charts. Our music was heard. Our music was global. Our music was even pirated by very big guns in the global music sphere. I'm talking of Michael Jackson. I'm talking of Shakira. I'm talking of, 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 of Rihanna. You know, a lot of global artists were pirating our music. Why? Because of its richness, it, its authenticity. And I don't think that has changed. All of us as Cameroonian, all of us have a role to play. And it's time for us to take the bull by the horn and make this thing happen if it has to work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I like the point that you've raised. Before I say what I want to say, I just want to hear from um, um, Mark Alonge. From a poet's perspective, does this... Um, um, presence of foreign co um, um, content, does it affect you or does it limit you or does it inspire you as a point? It inspires me. Okay. I think, I, I, and just to add to what Asaba beautifully said, I think that you cannot shine brighter by dimming another person's light. I think that all of us um, will get better and I think you rob yourself somehow if you limit the amount of foreign content coming in. I think that there is a lot of inspiration that you can gather. And I also think that you cannot blame an audience for not responding to a particular art. I think that it is the artist's responsibility to make an audience respond. You cannot say, you're not consuming my art, I have to force you, I have to tell you what to listen to and what not to listen to. No, I'm the artist, I'm the creator, I have, I, I have the yam and the knife, I can make things happen. So it is my responsibility to promote, to have tours, to have shows, to be innovative, to create the best content, you know, to go bigger and better and wider and make people follow me. Thank you very much. See, I want to come to you. And like you just rightly said a statement here that you cannot block another person's shine, you cannot stop someone's shine in order to shine. Now you have been very very aggressive if i have to use the word because with your 80 20 ideology or campaign do you think that is the right way to go about it 80 20 is not a stop for foreign collaboration mm -hmm. 80 20 is not a stop for foreign uh, importation mm -hmm. you see listen the problem is that we have lost the taste of ours for example let me come back to this my sister she said something here she said she's a blogger right and she said Cameroonian are supportive. If Cameroonian were not supportive, she wouldn't have been where she is today. Do you know why she says so? Because she is rich. She's fine. Now, what about the 99% who are not like you? It means you don't feel about them. Interesting. Um, carrying your hand, is, your hand is up. Yes. You know, he's, he's saying all he's saying respectfully out of ignorance. He does not know that I have been blogging since 2010. And I started getting popularity from my blogging in 2017. So how many years did I wait? How many years was I patient for? How many years was I suffering for? You know, he, he, he's, what he's saying, he's seeing the result of my hard work. People like Libyanka, Libyanka has been doing music since when she was in America, she traveled to America, but now we're hearing her. Did she stop? No. Did she give up? No. I represent a Cameroonian who works hard and who has been steady with her hustle and who is a proof that you can make it in Cameroon if you work hard. Cameroonians will support you as long as you give them what they want. So work hard. Don't give up. Let me pause you there. I know you have a lot to say. I can see you boiling it, but uh, I really want okay. to talk to somebody here. <laughs> Vicky Fokala. Yes, talk to me. Like, yes, feel free. All right. See, I, I, the reason why I'm laughing is because 
I find out that all of us are saying the same thing. Yes. The only problem is that we are using different, different thematics, okay. different <laughs> approach <laughs> to it. Okay. Because they are prone to foreign things because they don't believe that anything good can come out of here. But somebody needs to come to better things to understand the depth of what you're doing, the relatability of what you're doing. Somebody needs to listen to Asaba to understand that there is music in Cameroon. I think that the reason why you think that we have to work extra hard to be successful and that a little boy in Nigeria will sing a song in his estate and become popular internationally is because we feel like there is nothing good coming out of this place. We need to be able to believe in what the people are doing and then push them with Vicky. all the strength that we got. Vicky. You are speaking for him by saying that, oh, Libyanka was given by Cameroonians, this one was done by Cameroonians, this one was done by Cameroonians. Finally, that's what we're saying. 8020 is just the Cameroonian in you. Thank you very much, Vicky Fokala. Thank you so much. I think, Mark. I, I, I'm beginning to think that this is not really a debate. We are probably just saying the same thing the same differently. Yeah. So uh, what I would suggest, I yes, what I would suggest is that maybe okay. somebody takes the time, maybe see why it takes the time to really explain, first of all, that 8020 principle. Because the beginning of this debate was four. Yes. So I, I think we are saying the same thing. No, I think there's a lot of indifference and there's a lot of people don't actually know what they stand for. See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm indifferent. I'm not for, I'm not against. I'm indifferent. I want a Cameroonian content to be consumed because I manage artists. I manage artists. Of course, I want their content to be consumed, but I'm not going to force it inside anybody's throat. I'm going to try to do my job as a talent manager to... No. Gina, Gina, okay. Bring the mic to me. <laughs> just by my song One Love featuring Kamini that was released just two months ago. But you know what? These DJs will take your song and they'll keep it in their beds. They'll keep it and they won't play it. We do support. Some will play, but some won't. You cannot come out. You, you cannot come out and say no. I want to say, I want, I want to say something, guys. All right. I want, I want everybody to calm down first. All right. Are we calm? All right. Are we calm? Are we calm? Now, you guys have raised some very key points and I want us to move forward. Okay, so it's been a very um, interesting talk. I mean, with everybody having their point, it's really beautiful. But Sabrina, you've been awfully quiet. What do you have to say? Well, I've been quiet because hearing, I feel majority of us are just saying the same thing. I just think the problem is we don't believe in what we do. We don't accept that we're uh, giving a good product. For example, if you go to a club, I assure you that you listen to more foreign music than Cameroonian music. And if you want, as an artist, if you want your music to be, to be played, you have to pay for your own music to be played in your own country. So that's why I think, I think it's a problem. I don't think those foreign people are paying for their music to be. Thank you very much. I want to come to see why. I want you to answer the radicalism about it now he has spoken about you on social media you're very hot on social media with the 8020 idea but what else aside being on the screen and talking about it have you been doing to promote the ideology what is happening in cameroon is that the ignorance about our identity who we are has become a, a, a chronic in such a way that we have lost taste of who we are completely you understand? Now, when I discover that it is not making any sense, listen, guys, let's face reality and fact. How will you explain to your own self who love the land you are living in that you go to a traditional wedding, a supposed traditional wedding of Cameroon that should be Bakweri, Duala, Sawa, Bamingi, or Bayangi? You go there, 100% of the people are people of that land. They prefer to play one song from Ethiopia, Uganda, or Nigeria, or where else, where they don't understand what he's talking about. To be honest, do you feel free? Will you come in and say, oh, no, people have choice to song? It's crazy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You've said a lot. Now, Vicky, now you're an MC, a renowned one for that, and you've gone to events. On a scale of one to ten, during these events that you MC, how much of the music of the country, how much of foreign content is played in these events on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, shamefully, we have maybe one music in every 30 that is Cameroonian. Okay. One music in every 30 that is Cameroonian. Now, as you as an MC and an advocate for the 8020, do you hold the mic and tell the DJ, start playing Cameroonian music in this event, or do you just, because the people demand, you just let it go? Of course, I will do my own that I can. I will ask them. Normally, as an MC, it gets complicated because it's not my event. Yeah. You go, and sometimes before the couple come to get married, they have their own playlist that they must have had. But if I see that I have a chance to be able to put it in, for example, yesterday, the, I was at an event yesterday, MC an event yesterday, and 
Thankfully, they had a live band, and thank God I know how to sing. I sang all, almost like four of her songs. I sang other songs so that Cameroonians can understand that we also have music. And when the DJ was able to play, since I understood that the people did not choose the songs, I had to make them put in more of Cameroonian music. What this 8020 is all about is about can we start to put value on ours? As a blogger, your responsibility is not to be paid. Your responsibility is to promote the music or whatever else it is that your blog promotes. If your blog is a music blog, go and search for great talents and expose them. That is your job. Thank you very much. I, I like what you said. I'll come back to you, but I want to come behind here. Now, for you as a consumer, would you... We appreciate somebody telling you what to watch as a consumer or would you go for what you love? So when we are looking at the content at the Cameroon level, I think as a consumer I see it to be very poor. And you cannot, it's very, it's very disrespectful to try to impose me to watch something. You cannot do that. It's disrespectful. And I think they themselves as artists have to, have to like those producing content have to organize themselves. Thank you very much. Now, you've said a, li um, a lot, and I want to come back to my panel now. We've spoken a lot about the 8020, the music and everything. I see Asaba, I see Vicky, I'm coming to you guys. But now, this is a question I want to throw now to everybody, and you get to talk. Now, he has spoken about quality of the content. He has spoken about the organization. I want us to go back to memory lane. Now, in the 70s and 80s, that was the, that was the glory year of Cameroon, where you had the likes of Manu Dibango being recognized internationally for his hit song, how come he did it and how come it's a challenge now? First, I want to talk. I'm not going to answer your question directly. I'll start because I may forget. Um, someone said that CY is radicalizing the movement, right? Let me give an experience. Now, there is this salon. I'm not going to call the name. They're not paying me for that promo. I, I, I went there for the first time to do my pedicure and manicure. And for the very first time, I sat there for eight hours because, I mean, it's a good place. People come there a lot. There was a whole queue waiting. And I sat there for eight hours and I finally got my pedicure done. And through that time, no one Cameroonian song was played, not even mine. It's not like they didn't know me. They knew me. Mm -hmm. Now, when I left that place, I wrote the public um, relations officer of the, of the place and I told her, see, this is your place. I'm never going to set my feet in it. I didn't force her, it, it was well, not by force. They don't, they don't have to play my songs by force, but they have to play it in respect for me, mm -hmm. for my art, because, you're there. because I'm there, you understand? I'm not forcing them to play it any other time. But when I'm there, they have to play my song or play my colleague's song. That was violence in a way. So is that indirectly saying that technically, we just need to force the music I'm on not, our people? I'm not, I'm not, everybody has their way, their, 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 their approach in this thing. Yeah. You get. Mm -hmm. See why has chosen his approach. Like it or not, that's his approach. You're not going to tell him how to use his voice. You're not going to tell CY how to use his, his, his words. He's going to do it how he wants to do it. I'm going to do it how I want to do it. But what is the motive of this whole thing? Yeah. All of us want the same thing. So you think or you, you're insisting that, or should I say, your opinion is that we should actually come with a compelling force yes. towards the Cameroonians. Yes. Yes. Using our different tactics. But tactics. We should be compelling. We should be compelling. All right, thank you. I want to come to Gina. <laughs> I'll get back to you. Gina, um, if we are talking about identity, we have Coupe de Calais in Ivory Coast. We have um, um, the fella, um, um, fella, fella Tico and his um, rhythm that Nigerians are building on or have been building on for decades now in their music. What do we have in Cameroon that you advise all the Cameroonians or artists to build on? We have, we have our own identity. I yeah. mean, we have artists who sing in Bikusi. Mm -hmm. We have so many artists that also do Boko. Mm -hmm. We have rap artists that do Boko. Boko is our culture. Mm -hmm. they, mix, they mix the pidgin English in their song. So we have an identity. Now, I want to talk to my panelists right here. Vicky's hand has been up for a while. Before, before, I, talk, before I talk about these artists, and uh, it's just going to be connected. You spoke about the 70s. In the 70s and the 80s, in the days of Manu, Manu Dibango, Cameroonians were so conscious of what they were doing. Yes. Cameroon was the hub for foreign people to come and take from. Yes. Now, I think the, the, the coming of the internet, of the digital space in Cameroon is, is, is one of the bad things that happened to this country. Because it came and because we are not...
used to it. We just went crazy. We are seeing things from other places. And now people are coming in right now because Cameroonians have made it look like what Nigeria is doing is better than us. Yes. Even those in Cameroon now want to be like Nigeria so that they will be accepted. Yes. We you. need to help them Thank to you. come back to that original place. Talk to me. Um, talk to me, Harris. Talk to me. You've been raving and looking and talk to me. I'm here. Okay, so first of all, um, as I made a statement, she yes. said people should allow Kosi to do music that Kosi wants to do. I can throw that back at her and say she should allow people to listen to music that they want to listen to. At the end of the day, I feel like this problem is a huge entitlement issue that we have. Okay. You who is not a blogger, you want to tell a blogger what a blogger should do. Mm -hmm. You who is not an MC, you want to tell an MC what an MC should do. You who is not an artist, you want to tell an artist what an artist should do. At the end of the day, let us allow people. She also made a statement that nobody will tell CY how CY is going to run this campaign. Why should CY also come and be telling bloggers how they should run their blogs? Why should CY also tell an artist how to run their blog? Don't give what you cannot take. If you are not willing to let people share what, with you what they want you to do, don't share your own ideas or don't impose it on other people. My point is simple. Cameroonians support Cameroonian content. Yes. They do. If anybody says that no Cam Cameroonians don't support Cameroonian content, I will stand and say it is not true. Cameroonians support, like an island, Mama. Cameroonians support Cameroonian content anywhere that they are. This is the issue. People want to impose on them what they want them to do. Okay. Since you have been asking here that, okay, what is the Cameroonian music? Nobody can give you an answer. Mm -hmm. Why? Because most of the Cameroonian music that they produce now does not have that identity that we are used to. You understand? Okay. Where, Mama? Leave me, let me go ahead. There's Makosa, there's, they have said Makosa, Bikosa, all of that. You know? Now, the music that a lot of people do now, is trending music. And there's nothing wrong with that. We should not make artists to feel guilty for doing trending music. An artist should not feel guilty for doing trending music. Libyanka is trending now. The music that she did is not Makosa. Mm -hmm. It's not Bikusi. Mm -hmm. But she identifies as a Cameroonian. Mm -hmm. So we should not impose arts on people. Okay. We should allow artists, we should allow people to express their creative genius the way they want to express it. Just as we should allow bloggers and other people in other platforms to express themselves the way they want to express it. The only thing I'm going to say is that the only thing I'm going to say is that we as Cameroonians, as I've been saying from the beginning, we should have that Cameroonianness in us. Nobody will tell you. We should have that Cameroonianness in us. And that is the point thing I'm trying to figure out right here, right now. Ben, I want to talk to you. Vicky, I'm coming. You know, let's example Nigeria. Nigeria has influence not only over Cameroon. Yeah. They have influence in almost every country mm -hmm. in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. How do they do this? Yeah. Those are techniques, right? Those are techniques. Those are the techniques we are supposed to be learning. So what? CY and we and also we also have to understand that. To, wait, let me finish. Okay. What CY and the rest they are supposed to be doing is teaching their artists, teaching their artists how first of all to get their music globally. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's the same thing Nigeria is doing. How are they doing that? That's what CY is supposed to be teaching their artists, not us the listener. You cannot tell me what to listen to. Thank you. You said they cannot tell you what to listen to. The same as the same as Asaba said, you cannot tell Kosi what to play or what music to do. You guys have raised some very key points. You've said some very interesting things. I want us to move forward. What is the way forward for the Cameroonian industry, the entertainment industry? What is the way forward? Um, CY. Um, first of all, I want you all to understand something. Cameroonians have lost the taste. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So every country has right to regulate what its pe his, people's com his people consume. Mm -hmm. So the way forward is for the government. Because, for example, yes. Nigeria did a, a regulation. Yes. They did a ban. They even banned Okrika. Yes. Recently, we have seen Nigeria. Recently, we have seen Nigeria ban foreign models because they want to they want Thank to promote you. their own. Thank so you. What I'm saying is that the government <laughs> listen to me. Come we on, are heard. Thank you. Okay. I think I should go this way. Gina, what what is your way forward? The way forward me as a blogger, I honestly, 100%, I promote Cameroonian content. So the way forward is for me to continue to promote it and add more flavor to it and also I think um, we should implement some some policies with DJs and uh, media houses too. So I think that well, with that with that two options, it's going to go well. I mean, for Cameroon to have gained its independence, they had to fight for years, mm -hmm. for years. Nigeria fought for years. South Africa fought for years. It was not something that was done in a day. We are going to continue to convince and encourage our people to love and support home-based products. Vicky Fokala, what is the way forward in 30 seconds? I think the way forward would be to sound this out as loud as we can so that other people like DW also can come in and make the noise even louder. So we want to already thank them for doing for this because this is already a very resounding way forward.
people need to talk about it so that understanding can come in. And then another thing that also needs to be done is just self-consciousness. If you produce something, would you like people to buy it or wouldn't you want people to buy it? It's just as simple as that. Karish Dinge, you have the crowning say of everything that has happened here today. What is the way forward? So I think that the way forward, as I've been saying, is that we should celebrate Cameroonianness. Mm -hmm. We don't, we, we don't connect with our roots and our culture as much as we should. And I feel like that's what is playing. This, these are effects of all of that. Mm -hmm. Celebrate where you come from. Talk about your village. Don't be ashamed to speak your dialect, to speak pidgin. You know, because when, the more you do those things, the more you feel Cameroonian and the more you relate to Cameroonian content. Nobody will have to tell you. It will be part of you. Thank you very much. Celebrate the Cameroonianness. Be proud of who you are and... That is the only way we are going to promote our own culture, by celebrating ourselves and by celebrating one another. Let us hear your comments. Let us know what you think about this, because I'm certain it's not only in Cameroon that this yeah. is going on. It's going on all around the world. So let's find out from you, how, I, how do you think this can be solved? Until we meet again, peace out.